Hey, it's Mike from 424recording.com. In today's video, we're going to take a look at bouncing tracks from a 4-track and lining them up using metronome syncing and flex time. So today's video is another method of bouncing tracks from your 4-track and lining them up in post in a DAW in the digital realm. This technique is very useful if you're unable to bounce all of your tracks at the same time, say your tape outputs don't work or you don't have an interface that has more than two inputs. But it's also useful in other creative ways. And it all comes back to syncing all the tracks to the same metronome track and then lining it up in post in the computer using flex time to analyze the tracks and place them on the grid. Now, you may not want to place your analog cassette tracks to a grid, but if it's the only method to line up your tracks in post, you kind of have to have a little give and take. It's also just a great method in general for thinking about how to line things up on the four track, and maybe you could take it further in your own experiments. But basically last month when I did the flex time videos, I got an email from a buddy of mine. Maddie said, Sup dude, just saw your latest post. With flex time, you can make groove beat template. Very cool trick for various things. If you designate one track of click to your four track as a click, and then use the first bounce to dog with four track click track as your reference for a groove template, you can keep bouncing and then lining it up in DAW. I think it's a good starting point. Try it out in your experiments. Maddie Amendola. Thanks, Maddie. I had never considered this before, but in those flex time videos, I kind of just posited that you could line up your four track bounces with flex time, which you can, which works out pretty well. But this takes it a step further. I've never made a groove beat template, which is, you you know, metronome syncing essentially. That's what I'm calling it at least. Here's the method for doing this if it strikes your fancy. So step one, record a metronome track to your four track. Step two, fill the rest of your tracks with your song. Step three, bounce them to the computer in whatever way you can. Step four, open Logic, set the tempo of the metronome in Logic, and use flex time to analyze the tracks. Step five, line up the metronome track to the grid. Step six, adjust the other tracks of your song that go out of line with the metro or grid. Step seven, rinse and repeat until all your tracks are filled up again on the tape. As long as you keep recording to the same metronome track, you'll be able to keep bouncing your tracks to the computer and lining them up without worry of cassette tape migration. Step eight, thank Maddie again for the awesome method for time aligning cassette tape tracks. So it's a pretty cool method. Another thing to try out would be to say you wanted to record a song but only have four tracks and one is the metronome track, so now you only have three tracks. Well, so then you can record your drum beat, your bass track, maybe a synth track, but hey, you want to record acoustic, an electric, multiple vocal takes. In theory, using this technique, as long as you use the same metronome track and then analyze them in flex time and line them up in post, you should technically be able to record those first three tracks on one part of the tape to the metronome, fast forward so that you're not recording over anything, record another metronome take, record three more tracks to that, fast forward, record another metronome take, record three more tracks to that. I think you can see where I'm going with this. You can continue to keep your different takes of all the instruments rather than bouncing them all together or working off stereo bounces. And in post, it'll give you a lot more room for editing. So say you just like that cassette tape vibe on your tracks, this might be a good way to make sure they line up in post. Now, I haven't personally tried that method out. I've only tried out this first method that Maddie suggested. And I gotta say, it works like a charm. So I'm pretty sure that'll work. So you may not like this method because it interacts too much in the digital realm, but I personally think that marrying the digital and cassette tape slash analog worlds can produce some of the best stuff. Why not use the advantages that you have in today's world? I mean, you may not want to do that, and that's fine. But if you do, or need to fix some of the stuff that you wouldn't be able to fix if you only had a cassette four track, consider using this method. I think it's pretty cool and should save you some time and some headaches. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you nerd. This is Mike with 424recording.com. Godspeed, my friend. Thanks again, Maddie. Peace.